Hi, my name is Brad Cunningham, and today we're going to talk about using namespaces in your WPF applications. We'll start with a simple person class here. We have three properties defined, first name, last name, and age. And we've overridden the toString method so that we can get a visualization on our front end. In our main window, we have a content control that we created, and we've just called it content control here. And in the code behind, we're setting the content property of our content control equal to a new person object. And we've set a first name, a last name, and an age. So what happens when we run this application is you'll see the two string of our person object showing up here in the middle of the screen. And that's taking it from the content property that we've set on our content control. Ideally, what we'd be able to do is set this content property completely in XAML without using any code behind. So I'm going to go ahead and comment out this content property here in code behind, and I'm going to do this directly in XAML. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to set the content control dot content property here and when we do that what would be nice is if we can set this equal to a person object and you'll notice that I'm not getting any IntelliSense on person object which means that the that um, the XAML designer doesn't know what the person object is so even if I try to set say a first name you'll see that this isn't going to work you'll see that the the XAML designer is already underlying this saying that the type person was not found and it says verify you're not missing an assembly reference and that all reference assemblies are built and if we try to build this by pressing F5 you'll see that we get a build error here and a build error here is saying that the tag person doesn't exist inside the XML namespace and it says schemas.microsoft.com and you may be wondering where this namespace is coming from well if you look up at the top of your XAML file you'll see that it a definition here, an attribute called XMLNS, and it's set equal to some URL. This is the default namespace for all of your WPF um, XAML files. If you were to, say, remove this namespace, you'll see what happens is that all of the elements now cannot be found. So grid and content control, the window. Now WPF cannot find where these ob objects are defined because we've removed the default namespace. So we'll put that back in. You'll notice that there's another namespace defined underneath here, and it says XML name NS, and then there's a colon and the letter X. And the letter X is giving it a prefix for your namespace. So we can say something like X colon, and we get properties coming off the X colon that's inside the X namespace. So for our person object to work, we need to define a namespace prefix that tells WPF where the person object is defined. So we'll come up here and add a new line and we'll say XML NS and we'll put a and we put colon and we can put whatever we want here. So let's just call this my namespace. This can be any any string that you'd want. You set it and then you say equal and you'll notice that you get IntelliSense now and it's asking you, you know, is it one of these that we know about? And and here's the name of our namespace. It's called namespace before. That's the that's the namespace of our project. So I'll go ahead and select that. And what IntelliSense does is it tells it that it's a CLR namespace and here's the name of it which means that it's a DLL that we've got compiled in this case it's in the same project and now you'll notice the person is still broken it still doesn't know where it is because we we haven't prefixed the person object with our namespace alias so until we do that it's going to be looking for this object in the default namespace which remember is the one without the alias here XML name NS with no colon so to tell it where the person object is we need to add the namespace prefix. So I'll say my namespace colon. And now you'll see we get IntelliSense and it can find the types that are defined in that namespace. Person is one of them. And now we get first name and we can say last name. And you'll see I get full IntelliSense here. And I can say age. And now when we compile and run this, it's going to work. And you can see that our content was set to what we set it in XAML. And if we look again at the code behind, we've commented out this code here and we can actually just delete this now entirely so now we have no code behind this is just the default code behind that gets created for the window and we've created our object purely in XAML and set its properties in XAML and assigned it to the content property of our content control in order for us to create objects in XAML it needs to be able to be found either in the default namespace which is the one without the colon or if the object lives somewhere other than the default namespace we need to provide a namespace alias here and we provide the alias and we set it equal to where the types are defined that we care about and then anytime we want to get to that type we use the alias and a colon 
and then the type name, and then we can set those things in XAML directly. And that's all there is to it, to defining custom namespaces in XAML and referencing them in your code.